Charlotte is currently in the hospital with contraction-like feelings. So Charlotte, if you could, please cross those legs and keep it in. Baby sis. Baby sis. There's a 1.6% chance that she will go into labor before 34 weeks. We're very much in our nesting period now. And we've got maybe a month left. We are currently on our way to Swindon Hospital. The baby has come at 33 weeks and three. We are back from the hospital. She's been dying to tell people yeah. how Kennedy was born. So Charlotte's here. I am. Okay. Not labour, I was told it's not labour. <laughs> uh, hi Tom, your baby's here. Where did you learn how to do that? Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I mean, you had a 10 minute labour and no birth control. So, I don't know if this is going to be going in the vlog or not, because I don't know where life's going to go from here. Charlotte is currently in the hospital with contraction-like feelings. Um, she's being monitored at the moment, she's there with her husband Harry. Kids are being looked after. It's just... Not ready for this yet. We're only 32 and a half weeks. Hugo came at 36 weeks, but I just... Not yet, we haven't done any shopping. Reese and I are going shopping on Saturday to get all baby bits and get prepped for that. Yeah, I'm just not ready yet. So Charlotte, if you could, please cross those legs and keep it in. Hugo, would you like your baby brother or sister to come yet? Baby sis. Baby sis? Did you just say baby sis? So I realized I didn't up my shoes it's such a fruit loop yeah i realized i didn't update you guys properly with what happened yesterday with charlotte obviously she went into hospital because she was worried that she was having contractions now don't get me wrong what she was having were severe braxton hicks if not contractions but the doctors put her on one of those strapped in machine things i don't know what they're called but you know the ones where you get like two different bits of tape around your front around your stomach like elastic basically said that they've monitored her they were severe contraction type Braxton Hicks things, but it's nothing to be of concern with just yet. They are obviously going to keep a close eye and if the pain that she's experiencing sort of continues, then obviously she's more than welcome to go back in and be monitored again. So we're just gonna keep a close eye. They did do like a sweep type thing first, just to like make sure, like a swab, not a sweep, just to make sure that she sort of isn't going into labor and it comes back this test within like 10 minutes to let you know whether you are or aren't going into labor and luckily there's a 1.6% chance or a 1.8% chance they believe that she will go into labor before 34 weeks so hopefully she won't go into labor before 34 weeks but it doesn't look like we're going to make it all the way to 40. You really need to go and do this shop on Saturday and get all of the stuff ready for a baby because I think it's going to be coming sooner than we'd expected. I have not prepared for this. So guys, we have just... Oh, you're right. Getting comfy. We have just redesigned upstairs. It's not working, is it? It's no. working, but it won't work long term. No, so we realised that after the baby is six months old, they're obviously going to need to go into their room sometime sooner, but we're hoping We'll try and get as much of those months with us as possible and then obviously move them into their own room. We've realised we've got a three bed house so they won't have their own room unless we want to sacrifice a guest room. So ideally we need to move Hugo and the baby into the second biggest room in the house. And then the smaller room which is Hugo's nursery is going to become the spare room. So we're going to have to get like a pull out bed in there, like a sofa bed vibe. And we're just working out but all the furniture. Yeah. For the spare room. Annoyingly, it's one that I used to own and then I sold on Facebook Marketplace because I, I didn't need it, it anymore. The slats all interlocked, didn't they? Yeah, it was well good, wasn't it? It was actually really good. So we need to rebuy that one. So we need to move our room around slightly so that we can fit the next to me crib in there. And then we need to buy another cot from Oh Baby and put that in the spare room, which is now going to be the nursery and then basically we jig all of it. Yeah. We're very much in our nesting period now. And we've got maybe a month left? No, hopefully a bit longer than a month. No, a month. 
35. 33 weeks, so 34, 35, 36, 37. Yeah, we've got about a month left. I think it was wrong. It could, we could be August, but I don't think... I think, think it's achievable it's, in a month. Yeah, I just don't think this baby's staying in until... I think we'll have a baby potentially end of July. So we just got a lot to do. We decided to walk around the whole house measuring up. We even walked into Hugo's room with tape measures, with like measuring up around him whilst it, it was, was like literally this. a scene from Gavin and Stacey. <laughs> you know, when, like when, when yeah, you when know, Pam. like yeah, when Pam and Mick have the tape measure and they walk in on Stacey when they're trying to redo the bath and they're talking about old steel joists. It's literally a scene from that. Rob you, still Joyce. Hugo was like no, this. No, Joyce, not Joyce. <laughs> Hugo was literally like... He was fast asleep. And we were just there with tape line. measures like... Pew, 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 pew. It was all fun. Anyway, that's that. Reese is going to go and make me pudding now. I'm not. We're going to go and tidy up this kitchen that's a mess. That's what we're going to do. Then can I have pudding? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Oh my God. Gang. Um... You know we were nesting, we should have nested a bit earlier because we are currently on our way to Swindon Hospital to meet, meet our, baby. our baby that has been born. Shara messaged us at about five o'clock and said that she is having really intense pain and she's going to go to the hospital um, after she's dropped her daughter off at school. Yeah. And we were like, oh fine, okay, no worries. So I woke up at about half six and said, no worries, that's fine, keep us posted, hope you're all okay, la 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 la. 15 minutes later, I got a call from Harry and he was like, the baby's here, Tom. And I thought he was joking. I thought he was on a wind-up. He absolutely wasn't on a wind-up. The baby has arrived and really? we are driving to Swindon. Oh my God, the panic this morning. We had nothing packed. Um, we still don't really have anything packed. We just picked up random things, threw it in a bag and got in the car. Hugo's with us. Hugo's got, with us. Got about two days worth of food with us, about equally. Yeah. Your mum's coming to meet yeah, us we've, to get Hugo. Yeah, we've left the pram at home because we forgot that. So that's good. So Hugo doesn't have a pram and we're going to be in the middle of Swindon. Sure. Yeah, but um, the baby has come at 33 weeks and three. So that's not ideal. Um, apparently baby's doing okay. Baby is on oxygen. We still don't know what we've got because we said we don't want to know until we get there. Char's doing fine, touch wood, so far everyone's okay. So we'll keep you posted, but we're on our way to Swindon during rush hour. So that's really fun. K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. E-D-Y, lovely. Kennedy Ray, R-A-E. That is beautiful. I think that's the goal. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, no worries. Like yeah. Yeah. Stay nice and warm like you did. Yeah, you've probably got grubby hands. So, hi. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. Are you opening your eyes? Hello, little one. Hi. Hello. Oh, look at you. Hiya. Oh, big yawns. <laughs> bye bye, baby. You're saying bye bye, baby. Give, give a kiss. Good boy. Bye bye. Hugo screamed as soon as we did it because I think we just dunked him in. We did? Yeah, no. 
sometimes with premature babies they definitely don't like it and just slowly get it wet. Is it daddy and dada? There you go. Does you don't want a baby. There you go. Do you want to hold it? Hold the baby. Come on, let's go inside. Get her out. Ah, oh, that's oh. nice. In we go. Ah, oh, you should. Yay! Yay. Baby. Off you go then. Here you go. Who's this? Say hi. Wow, wow, yeah. Everybody's got a Does baby. Does your baby want a blanket? There we go. Baby wants a blanket. Oh. There you go. Nice. Oh, okay. what a good cool. boy. So, we are back from the hospital. Um, <laughs> we yeah. really didn't vlog anything. And to be fair, it's not surprising why we didn't. It was a very stressful environment. I mean, we were in the NICU for like 19 days. Really stressful 19 days. Really, really stressful. Like, honestly, bro. Well, We've got Charlotte and her family coming over later because, I mean, it's just nice to see them still. We haven't blocked them yet, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I said to Charlotte, does she want to do like some sort of like video of a birth story? Because she's been dying to tell people yeah. how Kennedy was born. Like, dying to tell people. I think people need to know. It's, it's, a, f it's a fun old story. Yeah. It really is. Traumatic, but fun. Yeah, so we are finally home. We are settled. You just can't film or vlog in the NICU, obviously. No. I mean, it was quite difficult as well, because not as in that in terms of vlogging, but it was quite difficult, the experience itself anyway, because yeah. she was in the high dependency unit when she first was born, because she was yeah. on CPAP, which is like pressurised oxygen into her lungs to keep them open. Yeah. She then had like cannulas, wires everywhere. It was just, that that itself was quite a traumatic experience alone. Yeah. And then shortly, say within like about four, four-ish days, she was off that into a normal incubator and slowly just working our way through the kind of NICU ward yeah. to the point of discharge. We had some scary moments in there, like oh my God. the monitors bleeping 24-7 are horrific. They haunt you, um, they come home with you. They you, do. You, you go to bed and suddenly you think, why is, her bleep, why, why is she bleeping? She's not here. It's just, it's not normal. And like all of the bleeping machines all sound the same. So like one, one thing bleeps like, oh, this has dropped, like your oxygen has dropped or your heart rate's dropped. And, Everyone quickly checks their baby's monitor to make sure it's not theirs. Yeah. It's a traumatic experience. If anyone's ever been through NICU, they will know. Um, I mean, we were lucky enough to go through it twice because Hugo was born at 36 weeks, but he was only in NICU for like four days. He yeah. didn't have any of these wires or anything like that. He literally just had jaundice, which a lot of babies do get, um, and he did manage to sort himself out. Yeah, this experience for me was a lot longer. The hotels we were staying in, Jesus Christ. Yeah. They were bad. Awful. But we hadn't budgeted for staying in Swindon for three, three weeks. weeks. No. We'd obviously budgeted for staying a few days before the birth or a few days before the due date and a few days after the due date, but we just didn't anticipate any of this. We were staying in these places that literally cost like forty pounds a night and um You can see why they were forty. It wasn't even worth forty pounds what we were staying in. It was not. I can assure you that now. It was it was quite horrific. But yeah, reasons we haven't vlogged. Horrific hotels. Very traumatic experiences. And just like the safety of like everyone else's child, I just don't think it's right for you to mm. vlog whilst someone else's no, child is in distress. Bit, like you get very, very it? poorly babies in NICU. Um, and it's just not fair. It's, it's not the experience to get out of camera, is it? Let's no. be honest. Think what I'm gonna try and do, or what I probably have already done, is like attach a compilation video of like a few snippets that we got whilst we were in NICU just like on our iPhones and stuff yeah. and like telling family and things like that but if I haven't done that mind your business and I'm sorry <laughs> anyway we're going to go out for breakfast this morning Hugo's gone to rugby um, everyone's been so good with keeping his routine as normal as possible which has been amazing and he I don't think he even cared that we were gone he was, so good. he was visiting he was so hospital good. most days um, for the first week or so, and then after that he sort of got back more into a routine and all that sort of stuff. And it was just, it was lovely for him to still have that normality rather yeah. than having to stay in hotels with us whilst we were just in NICU 24-7, because obviously we had to be there for Kennedy. Yeah, he's back to his normal routine, and he's gone to rugby this morning with Gramps, and then we're going to go and grab some breakfast, and then Charlotte and her family are coming over. So... We will catch you guys in a bit and oh, 
How the sleepless nights oh, are for you both. Times. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I, I actually, it's not as bad as she's when not Hugo, too bad. When Hugo was first born, it was a lot worse. I think Hugo was waking every two hours for a feed. Oh my god! Yeah. And then Kennedy wakes every three or three and a half hours for a feed, but has higher volumes of feeds now. Yeah, which I think works well for us. Yeah. We just take it in turns. Yeah, as best we can. Yeah, unless I'm like a zombie, then it's just all on you. Oh, if Tom will get up and I'll be like, Tom, can you go make a pop? And he goes, Yeah, yeah. And then he'll fall asleep, or he'll go, or I'll say, Tom, can you, are you going? And he went, yeah, I'm just waking up. I just need to wake up a second. But you know, like, sometimes and when you're like, I just like, need to wake I'm up. I'm one of them people, I, if, I, if I need to get up, and with a baby, you can't just sit there and chill. I'm like, I literally, if I hear a cry, and I'm up. I'm, I'm going, like... Babes, how about when I went downstairs this morning and went and got a bottle and came back upstairs and you hadn't changed a nappy, because you'd fallen back asleep? When? I don't think that happened. That absolutely did happen. I don't think that happened. Yes, it did, because I came back up and I went, have you not changed an nappy? And you went, yes. <laughs> As if you were like Boris Johnson or something. <laughs> Mind your business, we're both as bad as each other. Trying to paint me out to be the devil. You right. are bad, though. I have my moments, but so do you. Once. Once, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start logging each and every one. I'm gonna get <laughs> this gonna, week. I'm gonna have a ring binder. <laughs> right. Why a ring binder? Well, why not a ring binder? Why do you go old school? <laughs> do you want to get your typewriter out? What, <laughs> what a hard copy. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Bye. Where is it? So, hi. My name's Charlotte. Hi. I'm Charlotte. As if people didn't know that already, by the oh, horrible yeah. photos you posted of me. Uh -huh. Do I need to move the baby mat? I feel like I need to. No? No, it looks like a nice little... Looks like we've got a table. Just put Kennedy in the middle of it. Oh, nice. Just... <laughs> just sitting there like... So Charlotte's here. I am. And basically, the last time, like the last video they saw, was me and Reese driving down to the hospital. Oh. Um, after you guys had called me. So do you want to explain what happened before you'd called me? <laughs> yeah, so a week before Kennedy's arrival, I had been getting some sort of pains, yeah. felt like they were contractions, told that they were not. Yeah. Um, I actually, funnily enough, vlogged about that and then the vlog never went out because I haven't had time to edit any vlogs oh, since no. she arrived. So I literally was sat down playing with Hugo and I was like, oh my god, today Charlotte had to go to the hospital because she was experiencing Braxton Hicks-like crap. <laughs> Cue that video right and now. And Charlotte is currently in the hospital with contraction-like feelings. He said, like, oh, don't worry, she won't be giving birth before 34 weeks. There's a 1.6% chance Yeah, 1.6% chance. Um, Five days later. <laughs> I'd been un uncomfortable for the week, but not yeah. too bad. And then the night before... Tossing and turning loads, really uncomfortable. Didn't feel like contractions though. Yeah. I've had two. I how should know how that. How often were the pains? It was like every half an hour or so, <laughs> but I didn't time it because I was like, not labour. I was told it's not labour. <laughs> and then I got up in the morning to Harry loudly getting ready for work. Went into the bathroom, sort of keeled over the sink really uncomfortably. He came up to see if I was okay and if I needed him to stay at home. And I went, no, nah, you're fine. I'd already messaged Tom saying that I felt a bit uncomfortable. I'm going to drop Callie to school and, you know, take Head a trip the to the hospital. Yeah. That was what, like? Five? Yeah, I think it was like 25 past five or something. Yeah. I decided I was just going to get up at six. I wasn't going to go back to bed. And then Harry came in and went, do you want me to stay off? And I went, no, I'm going to work, you'll be fine. And he went, call me if you need me. Within 30 seconds of him driving away, I text him, because I am organised. Um, I text him and said, come home. Didn't not, get a not, urg not urgent enough to call, clearly. No, no. no, no. <laughs> um, then decided, no, I'm going to call you. And then he came home and I just said, look, I need you to get Callie ready. I'm not comfortable enough to get her dressed and then you can just drive me down to the hospital. I went, I'm gonna go to the toilet, just see if I'm a bit uncomfortable, see if I need the toilet. Mum, you know, mums, that have given, well, people that have given birth will know that, that you can't quite always tell the feeling. Sat down, said, go get Callie ready for school. And then I looked down and saw a lot of hair, not mine. <laughs> Not mine, and just screamed for him to call an ambulance because her head was coming out. Yeah. Um, About what? twenty-five past six, like I'd woken up and I saw your message from like an hour before saying yeah. I'm in a lot of pain. The pain's coming every like thirty, like twenty to thirty minutes, like. And I said, surely there's something I can do for this. And you were like, and then you just didn't reply. 
And I was like, keep Sorry. me posted, let me know how you are, la la la. Yeah. Um, so Harry rang an ambulance whilst Callie was getting up. I didn't hear him on the phone, so I was screaming at him, tell them I'm 33 weeks, you need to tell them I'm early. He's running back and forward trying to listen to it. I'm screaming, oh my God, the boys are gonna hate me <laughs> because that was my worry. Before an ambulance or anything had shown up while he was still describing to 999 what had happened, um, she came out. Yeah. Fully. Where? Where were you? I was on the toilet. She came out on the toilet. I caught her. She did not touch the toilet. Yeah. I had also been nesting a couple of days before, so my bathroom was clean. Um, <laughs> it was very clean. <laughs> very clean. <laughs> Weren't afterwards. Uh, I gave birth on the toilet by myself while he was running around doing phone calls. That was really fun. That was about 6.47 <laughs> that she was born. And then I got a call from Harry at 6.50. He literally just went, uh, hi Tom, your baby's here. I was like, no, you're winding me up. And he went, no, mate, I'm holding your baby. I was like, no, 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 you're, you're winding me up. Reese's mum was staying at the time. She was in the other room with Reese and Hugo because Hugo had just woken up and was having like a morning bottle and a play and having a lovely time. And I was like, oh my God. He was like, so see you in two hours, yeah? I was like, yeah, Charlotte, okay. He was like, Charlotte's fine, baby's fine, get here now. And I was like, yeah, of course. So I awesome. ran next door, <laughs> opened the door and just went, Charlotte's had the baby on the toilet. And Reese went, what? And Reese's mum went, no. <laughs> then we had to quickly pack everything. But we, how which... quickly did you pack, Tom? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't pack <laughs> oh very my quickly. God. So this is a reenactment of, I've just come in the door, I've decided, right, I need to pack. Reese is packing and I'm going, I'm doing this. Right, we must pack. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we've got to pack. Literally. Yep, yeah, yeah, let's pack. Yep, yeah, what do we, we do? We need to pack. At which point I went, Tom, stop. Tom, stop, what? So, what, what? I was yeah, like, you get you get Hugo ready. Yeah, so I got I'll Hugo's stuff ready, which was fine. We dressed him in the most disgusting outfit <laughs> oh, ever. Awful. It was vile. It was awful. so bad. He was wearing a Lakers top, shorts that didn't even match, and then blue sandals. But that's all we had. I think your mum put the shoes on him, so I blame Wendy for that. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was that. And then we were in the car within probably 15 minutes. Yeah. Travel cot the lot, forgot the pram called my mum and was like, Charlotte's had the baby, we're on our way. My mum was in Devon. She was on like a holiday or whatever. Yeah, with my sister. Yeah, yeah. she was in De Devon? I don't know, yeah, she was Devon. somewhere. She was telling me earlier. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so she was on holiday with my sister and I called her and I was just like, Charlotte's had the baby, uh, what do we do? And she was like, right, I'll come and meet you and see you in two hours, bring Hugo, I'll take him. So that was a stressful experience. And then Harry I'm said, "I'm so sorry for you." It's mm. fine. It was really hard for me <laughs> that experience. That morning was a tough one. I don't yeah, know about you. I'm, but... I was fine, obviously. <laughs> and then, yeah. So then, um, when we were driving down, Harry said to us, "Like, do you want anything? Do you need anything? Do you want us to tell you what it is?" And we were like, "No, don't tell us. We want it to be a surprise." Obviously, still. obviously, he was like, "Baby is breathing." Yeah, baby's, baby's fine. Okay. Baby's breathing. <laughs> um, but yeah, on the drive down, we were obviously driving and three magpies flew directly in front of our windscreen and it's three for a girl so i said to reese i'm a firm believer in magpies and i always have been right the entire pregnancy it's just there's been a magpie i've seen three magpies she was like three magpies three magpies three magpies and i was like oh i've seen four today that's that's thrown a spanner in the world <laughs> so yeah so saw three magpies and i said to reese if it's not a girl when we get there i will be very shocked because i've just seen three magpies directly in front of me Anyway, radio silence came from these guys oh all God. of a sudden so, whilst we were driving down. We were about 30 minutes. Um, we were about 30 minutes until we got to the hospital. We were like, I think we must have just got on the M4. Yeah. At that point, Harry and you had just stopped replying because you obviously got to the hospital. You were being checked over. Baby was being rushed into NICU. Yeah. We literally had no idea what was going on. Yeah. And I was, I was just, I just wanted you to go. Yeah, baby's fine, baby's fine, baby's fine, and every yeah. message, just to make sure. And at which point, we got to the hospital, and I was like, we're just going to come up now, and Harry, and Harry just replied, okay, and I was thinking, oh my god, the yeah. worst, the worst, I... the worst. But, you, did, you guys did have a bit of a traumatic yeah. experience so I after the birth. I obviously delivered her myself, got her breathing, was fine. But how to... did you get her breathing? Um, I was oh rubbing her god. back with my hand towel, so that's been ruined, Um, and then... I'm just, I don't even know why, I'd, I know why I'd done it, my instincts kicked in, but I shoved my pinky in her mouth and just swooped out a load of gunk. But where did you learn how to do that? Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> so she ladies. was telling all the nurses, she was like, I learned that on Grey's Anatomy. They were like, that's where we did all our training. <laughs> well, yeah. 
So I, once she'd been delivered and the placenta had been delivered and I had to do all of that before the ambulance got there, I managed to wrap her up in a towel, um, keep her warm and everything. The ambulance showed up really quick. The ambulance, like the paramedics were absolutely lovely. Um, but I, he was checking me over and I just went, I feel really dizzy. Still sat on the toilet, but I feel really dizzy. And he went, oh no, you're fine. And I went, you're gonna take this baby right now. Like, <laughs> right now. Um, and then I closed my eyes and took a wee nap. <laughs> <laughs> and then I woke up to him placing Kennedy on the floor next to us just so he could help me. Um, and then I closed my eyes again for another nap and woke up to him like this, caressing my face. Oh, I, love that. Um, I know, <laughs> I thought it was in a movie. Uh, but he was stood where he had put Kennedy on the floor. So I just went, where's the baby? <laughs> the moment I woke up um, and then Harry strolled in with her. Um, Callie had already poked her head in as I'd given birth um, and gone, Tom and Reese's baby. And I went, yes, it is. Please get out. She was not phased by any of it. She was obsessed that there was a baby and obsessed that there were four paramedics in my house. Yeah. That's all she cared about. I had bled quite a lot. So they- You were hemorrhaging. Us, yeah, I was hemorrhaging really badly. So they took I mean, us you the had a 10 minute labor and no birth control. So I'm not surprised you were hemorrhaging. <laughs> Who needs painkillers? Not this girl. The paramedic was obviously rushing so quickly that he flung everything he was using into the bath and all up the walls. There was if anyone had stuff seen everywhere. the pictures, it looked like a murder scene. Obviously, yeah. Harry went home in the evening was... and took these photos and showed us them, and we were like, I can't believe it. Like, I'm surprised you're alive with the amount of blood that was in that bath. Yeah, so we got into the hospital, we got upstairs, we run the buzzer, and we said, Hi, we're here to see Charlotte Fox and the baby. Where are you? Let us in. <laughs> so they let us in and they said, Hi, excuse me, could you just take a uh, seat in the side room, please? I and Reese and I were like, Reese and I were like, sorry? They were like, yeah, could you just go and sit in the side room? Now you watch EastEnders and you go in the can side room. Yeah, can you go and walk, sit in the side room? Or and then they're like, someone you. will come and speak to you. And you're like, okay, great. So we were in there. Like I was, yeah, I was not in a good way. I was not you aware. You were in a good way. Yeah, I was. But I wasn't in a good bad. way in that point. They came in and they went, so congratulations. And we were like, sorry? What? You what? just sat us in a side room and le left us there for like seven minutes in silence. And then they just walked in and were like, congratulations, you've had a baby. So obviously baby's in NICU. You still don't know what the baby is. So we'll keep calling baby, baby. So baby's in NICU, baby is on breathing support, baby is doing very well, Charlotte is doing well as well, however, she has been hemorrhaging, she probably will need an operation, would you like to go and see her? And we were like, yep, yeah, let's go and see Charlotte. So we walked straight in, gave Charlotte a hug, and she was sobbing, like, in bits. She was like, I'm so <laughs> yeah. I said to the midwives, when the boys get here, I am just gonna cry, I'm gonna feel so upset. And then they walked in and I immediately went, I'm so sorry! <laughs> But also, accidentally, when I hugged you, and I didn't register this because I was just like in, I don't know, like whatever mode it was, I was just like... But I hugged you and you went, I'm sorry I couldn't keep her in. <laughs> I tried to close my legs. And, and I was like, that. but obviously I didn't hear that. I just heard... <laughs> so I just hugged her and went, it's fine. Baby's here. You're here. Everything's good. So I think we chatted for about 10 minutes about everything and the whole birth story and all this that and the other and then you went can i just tell you what you've had yeah and we were like uh yeah go on then and then she went it's a girl <laughs> i was so emotional she was don't know why <laughs> I, i've never seen you cry in my life and yeah, i think so i've got the quota i'm never crying again. I, I told her during the pregnancy she was allowed nine cries she was allowed a cry per month of carrying that child so <laughs> technically probably seven cries at this point yeah, you'd only be allowed seven cries because you're only carried for seven months. Do you not get like a mo month postpartum as well? No. Um. You, you you used your quota of cries in that one room. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was a lot. And then yeah, sorry after, about that. <laughs> and then afterwards, she was like, yeah, when she was like, you've had a girl, and they were like, would you like to go and see your daughter? You were like, go and see your daughter. Can I have some sushi? <laughs> It's because I was about to go down to theatre as well. I was also crying because I... I hate the idea of a spinal needle. I've never had to have a C-section, thankfully. Yeah. I hate the idea of it. And they said I was going to have to have it. And I went, put me to sleep, put me to sleep, like, please. They're and like, they went, no, oh. no, we really want to encourage you not to, like. And I just cried. And I was like, put her to sleep. Yeah, I was like, I've, be fine. I've been and through so point, much. And at which point, you went Charlotte mode and you went, no. Yeah, <laughs> I went, 
Charlotte no. Charlotte Moon? What does Charlotte you, Moon mean? <laughs> full, full Charlotte Moon of just, I'm not doing it then. I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's not happening. And so what are you going to do about it? Went, I want to be knocked out. Yeah. I don't want to have a spinal block. And they went, we're going to speak to the anaesthetist. Yeah. yeah. And then they came back, they were like, so you're allowed to be put out? And you were like, good. Okay, cool. Let's go for an operation. <laughs> I was fine. Yeah. Um, and then we went into, obviously. Then it, I couldn't believe it. The same day you were up and walking around. I was like, what yeah. the hell? Yeah. You were literally what just you charged like 24 hours later. Yeah. I had to stay because it was like an op thing. <laughs> what an inconvenience for you. I had to stay overnight, it was so rude. Um, yeah, and then the moment I got back from theatre, Tom walked in with sushi and I was like, this is the best day of my Gosh. life. The midwife that was with me heard Tom knock and went, you better not walk in and there's not sushi in your hands right now. I walked down the hallway and I buzzed and I was like, oh, I'm here for Charlotte. And they were like, fine, come in. Walked in and I went, I got the sushi and all like the midwives and nurses outside went, Ray! Because <laughs> I'm guessing that's about? all you talked about. <laughs> I was um, like, I can't wait to eat sushi again. Oh, so, it was real fun. So yeah, that was fun. And then obviously yeah. we went into NICU and we saw her and she was the smallest thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Did he? No so wonder did she you. just fell out of you. She didn't fall out of me. <laughs> <laughs> there was some sort of pushy motion going on. She didn't just fall there out of me. There was some resistance there. <laughs> I didn't just sneeze, for God's sake. But she was Diddy and... But she's, she did really well in NICU. Really well. I mean, she went from, what was it, like 70% oxygen when she, we first got in the hospital yeah. down to... 25% or yeah. something in like the first day, mm. which they were like, that's really good, mm. especially for like 33 weeks and three days. Yeah. They were like, she really smashed good. that. Yeah, they told us to expect to be in there until due date, and I remember texting Shah and saying, no, not happening, mm. I refuse. Yeah, because she'd alive. still be in there now, because yeah. I would only be 37 weeks tomorrow, so you'd still have at least three, four, oh maybe five... God. Thanks. The teams there were incredible, but I couldn't do that. That's our birth story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was chaotic. Um, I'm a drama queen, so is Kennedy. Yeah, our, our daughter <laughs> is always going to be the baby that was born on the toilet. Yeah. She's so, called TP. She's called TP. <laughs> I'm going to get a little tattoo. A little, like toilet, a little plunger. toilet plunger. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably be in Take a Break magazine, because that's the usual <laughs> stuff that goes in there. That's about it. Hope you enjoyed the vlog. Sorry it was chaotic, and... So is the we will, Yeah, we will resume <laughs> yeah. normal programming very soon, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.